Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you, the supercar universe is beginning to resemble Marvel's, with so many awesome, avenging members that the road, or the big screen, can hardly contain them. With its signature green skin and bellowing V10, the Lamborghini Huracan Performant is surely the automotive version of the Incredible Hulk. With apologies to the Audi R8 and its movie tie-ins, there's no way Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, couldn't resist upgrading to a McLaren 720S, that super suit of a car bristles with so much weapons grade technology that the mortal inside can't help but feel arrogantly superior. The Chevy Corvette ZR1 is Captain America, obviously, the humble roots underdog who can still kick your ass with patriotic spirit and ingenuity. And the Ferrari 488 Pista? I'll go with Spider-Man, as like Peter Parker after the arachnid bite, the high-performance version of the 488 GTB seems both a freak of nature and a creature of destiny. It's super-powered, sure, but also fearlessly gymnastic, graceful, and oh so sticky. And it looks great in red and blue. The Ferrari spun me into its seductive web in Italy, where I lapped the Pista at the company's legendary Frana test circuit then pushed it nearly as hard in the Emilia Romagna countryside, where this hopped up 488 delivered as much pure, soulful entertainment as any car I've recently driven. As the successor to a long line of mid-engine special series Ferraris, including the most recent one, the 458 Speciali, the 488 Pista has big shoes to fill. To fill those loafers to bursting, the Pista brings the biggest power gains, and the most intensive transfer of Ferrari racing technology, of any special series model yet. First, this is the strongest 8-cylinder Ferrari to ever rocket out of a showroom, with 710 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque from just 3.9 liters of twin-turbo V8. That's a 49 horsepower jump from the standard 488, with 7 additional pound-feet to boot. Coincidentally or not, the Pista precisely matches the horsepower and torque of the McLaren 720S, with its barely larger, 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8. Curb weights also seem a toss-up, the Pista shaves 200 pounds from the already svelte 488 GDB, resulting in a claimed dry weight of just 2,816 pounds. If that number is accurate, that's 13 fewer pounds than McLaren's carbon fiber intensive 720S. In fluid-filled form, the Ferrari weighs 3,047 pounds at the curb. 106 fewer pounds than a Porsche 911 GT3 RS, about 250 fewer than Lambo's Performant, which admittedly has a WD, versus the Ferrari's rear drive, and about 550 less than a Corvette ZR1. The resulting supercar is a track day showboat and a licensed shredder on the street, Ferrari claims 062 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour in a seemingly conservative 2.85 seconds. I suspect enterprising testers will achieve the shorter 0 to 60 miles per hour run in 2.7 seconds, maybe less. The 0 to 124 miles per hour sprint, 200 kilometers per hour, takes a ridiculous 7.6 seconds. That's 0.7 seconds quicker than the old 458 Speciali, the latter one of the best most beloved sports cars I've ever driven. Top speed rises to 211 miles per hour, up from about 206 in the standard 488. The private road course of Frano offers first-hand evidence as to what this latest Berlinetta can do. I'm quickly reacquainted with Ferrari head test driver and engineer Rafa Avida Simone, who takes me out for a few smoking laps before turning me loose on my own. The old 458 specially circled Frano in as little as 1 minute and 23.5 seconds, in pro hands, the 488 Pista is 2 seconds faster, at 1 colon 21.5, a time which also makes it 1.5 seconds quicker than the standard 488. Only two production Ferraris have lapped Frano in less time than the Pista. 
One is the hardcore, 770 horsepower F12 TDF, with a half second edge over the Pista. The other, in a lap record set by De Simone himself, is the LaFerrari, in 1 19.7. That bears repeating, this Pista, starting from $345,300, gives up just 1.8 seconds per lap to Ferrari's $1.4 million, 949 horsepower hypercap. So, yeah, it's fast. From its aerodynamics now to its engine breathing stern. The Pista takes copious lessons from Ferrari Challenge race cars and the 488 GTEs that have dominated the FIA World Endurance Championships, including two consecutive GT manufacturers' titles. Those bona fides are on lavish display at Ferrano, right down to red four-point seat belts that are optional for European buyers, but don't conform to US regulations. No loss there unless you enjoy wriggling into and out of racing harnesses every time you stop for fuel or a snack. Naturally, track-going Americans can still outfit the car with full five-point aftermarket racing belts. But once I strapped in, the Pista's point was clear, this supercar drives like a street-legal challenge racer, minus the racing slicks and massive rear wing, and with a livable right and sharper steering feel. Engineers trim 40 pounds from the engine alone, and 50% of its parts are new. Turbocharger speed sensors on each cylinder bank, mated to the standard 488 steel, titanium, aluminum alloy, turbine wheels, measure boost in real time to maximize power regardless of altitude or ambient temperature. Intake plenums are carbon fiber, compared with the 488, the engine gulps air that's nearly 15 degrees Celsius cooler. An increased tumble level inside the cylinders allows that big, 49 horsepower jump with no engine knock. Connecting rods are pricey titanium, as in Ferrari's F1 cars, while the new exhaust manifold is formed from Inconel alloy. It's ultra thin design, about 1 mm wide at its slimmest points, versus 3 to 4 mm for the standard 488, saves nearly 20 pounds reduces engine back pressure and pumping losses, and contributes to a Pista priority, improved engine and exhaust sound versus the tepid, strangled goose mating call of the standard 488. Engineers say the Pista allows up to 8 decibels more Italian tune glory into the cabin. That was a big challenge. We wanted to dramatically change and increase the sound, one engineer tells me. It worked. This turbocharged Ferrari may not shriek to 9,000 revolutions per minute like its predecessors, but the trip to 8,000 revolutions per minute is now a ripping, sonorous delight. There's more color to that roar as well, as measured by test graphs that show a visual increase in richer, more pleasing frequencies. That level of sound is higher and better in every gear, at any engine speed, aided by new exhaust bypass logic. A subtle reworking of the glamorous cockpit includes a slathering of Alcantara and carbon fiber and the elimination of the glove box from a 488 that was already shy on storage space. A carbon fiber console places the 488's three transmission buttons, one of which is launch control, on a striking, curved arm that recalls Batman's buttering. Hey DC fans deserve a shout out too. Aerodynamics and attendant cooling deserve their own dissertation. Virtual fairing of the exposed front tire trims drag by 7%, and the car enjoys a 20% gain in aero efficiency overall, including 500 pounds of downforce at 124 miles per hour. The Pista's center stripes, which create the striking two-tone livery, and come in subtle variations of color and pattern, pour down the hood into the race bread as dot another Ferrari showroom first. The striking duct channels air through the front fascia and over the hood to generate front axle downforce. Indeed, the Pista's front end is entirely new, including a larger volume fascia, splitter flicks, and a carbon fiber hood. Front diffusers bend and accelerate air into the wheel arches, creating suction and downforce. Among the many tack carryovers from Challenge Racing, the front radiators are inverted and canted rearward to direct hot air along the underbody, but well away from side intercooler intakes. In another Challenge-inspired move, 
the engine intakes move to the car's rear, to take advantage of that higher pressure area. The 488 signature swoopy cleavage is aft of the doors and now strictly tasked with feeding the turbo intercoolers and cooling the engine bay. As on the 488 GTB, the rear diffuser incorporates three active flaps that can rotate up to 14 degrees to stall the diffuser and minimize drag, up to that 211 mile per hour top speed. The Pista's dolphin tail spoiler grows 30 mm higher and 40 mm longer, and now angles slightly upward for added downforce. The result is a new definition of insanity for a mid-engine V8 Ferrari. On fantasy ascents and descents in Emilia Romagna, the Ferrari accelerates so blindingly and connects corners so quickly that I'm forced to recalibrate my sense of relative distance and time. The Pista becomes a deus ex machina version of Mikael Schifferin, blowing through slalom gates at downhill speed. But there's more to this F-car than just its forward pace. Modern Ferraris have become so fast that people tend to overlook how brilliantly they steer, even as hydraulic steering has given way to electric assist. For the Pista's electrified unit, every fraction of steering input translates to immediate, thrilling action. And while the car's magnetic damper suspension is fairly stiff, including spring rates about 8% firmer than the 488 GTB, the car never feels lumpy or hectic. It's just perfectly dialed in. After benchmarking competitors in full throttle acceleration tests from 2000 revolutions per minute in third gear, Ferrari science data, and underlines it with real pride showing that its turbocharged engine produces measurably less lag than any forced induction rival. That goes for its application in the Ferrari Poratifino convertible, as well. By design, the sound, torque, and acceleration build in concert to the peak of the rev range, mimicking the sensation of naturally aspirated power. And maximum horsepower is on tape everywhere from 6,750 revolutions per minute to 8,000 revolutions per minute, encouraging regular climbs to those Italian summits. I definitely achieve my share of maximum horsepower in the Pista, aided by, yes, another new tech bit, the Ferrari Dynamic Enhancer builds on such F1 developed traction strategies as side slip control, now on version 6.0, but with a twist. The system provides high-level oversteer management only when traction control is shut down completely and CT off mode. The APKA, indeed, software in the new actuation system estimate lateral handling variables throughout each corner, and can trigger individual brake pressure to control the evolution of side slip. The idea is to eliminate traction oversight, meaning power reductions, for drivers who can handle it, and help them to push the car's limits or enjoy a lengthy bouts of oversteer, with fewer steering wheel or throttle adjustments. We assembled journalists like to pounce on the brake intervention philosophy, but Ferrari insists this isn't a traditional stability control system. On a few lonely curves and roundabouts, I find it's a breeze to keep my foot down, light the Ferrari's 20-inch tires, and drift smoothly toward the exit with just a sin of counters tire. Should I credit the dynamic enhancer? Who knows? But it feels good. So good, in fact, that I end up driving the Ferrari for a solid hour in that CT off mode. I tease out wheel spin from standing starts and upshifts, enjoy some wrenching semi-automated launches, and marvel at how quickly I can drive this Ferrari without my personal danger radar going off. Back in America, police radar will be a bigger worry. Naturally, Michelin developed a unique version of its Pilot Sport Cup 2 tire designated K2 for the Pista, a tire that boosts dry and wet weather grip even as rolling resistance drops by 8% to save fuel. This 488 style culminates with spectacular carbon fiber wheels that weigh 40% less than standard 488 trims. Those optional wheels will add about 15,000 euros to Euro market models or $17,700 at current exchange rates, though US pricing for the wheels isn't set. Considering what supercar buyers shell out for thin, purely cosmetic carbon fiber trim bits, a set of highly engineered, aerospace coated carbon wheels for around 18 grand actually sounds like a fair deal.
The heightened aggression continues with the Pista's 7-speed, dual-clutch automated gearbox. Its revised shift cuts gear change times by 30 milliseconds when the steering wheel Manettino switch is in the race position. And the Ferrari racing hand-me-downs peak with a new wall effect red limiter. Traditional electronic limiters, Ferrari says, must predict red line's arrival and begin to cut fuel well before the engine actually gets there. In the Pista, there's no such drop in power and loss of momentum. Instead of banging into the red limiter with that familiar bap 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 sound, a dispiriting thrustus interruptus, the Ferrari continues to supply fuel and accelerate as it approaches the engine's peak. The propulsive effect proves addictive, on long sweepers in these sun-kissed hillsides, I keep my foot pinned, delay the paddle upshift for a few thrilling beats, and feel the pista surgeon snarl at the literal height of its powers. And because this engine revs so quickly, I'm grateful for Ferrari's signature cascade of shift lights on the steering wheel. On public roads, some owners may find shift quality in race mode to be too brutal, a repeated backslap from an Italian strongman. So when you feel like taking things down a notch, the Ferrari shifts just fine in its sport setting, or even in full automatic mode. Still, the Pista's fully tensed personality and performance is the real reason to buy one, or to upgrade from a civilian issue 488. Ferrari expects a remarkable 90% of US buyers to be current Ferrari owners, more than in any other country. Supercars and superhero movies are alike in another way, neither would exist without big budgets and cost overruns. The 488 Pistas $345,300 base price represents a hulking $92,000 premium over a standard 488 GTB. Two track specials down, one to go, with Ferrari and Lamborghini having served up their respective Pista and Performant, the ball blazes into McLaren's court. Will the upcoming long-tail version of the 720S one up Ferrari, Lamborghini, or both? Does it matter? That LT will surely deliver its share of British bragging points, including a superior power-to-weight ratio, over its Italian rivals. Here's hoping that ride quality is improved over the previous 675 LT, whose body-taxing manners made it a dubious proposition as a daily driver. But the real takeaway is that supercar fans, like superhero geeks, are living in a golden age of options and overstimulation. Whatever cut of cape you prefer, your supercar will blow mortals' minds, save the universe, and still leave time for a clever quip before it belts into the stratosphere. Thank you for watching our video, please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you.